Welcome. This video shows the Excel app demo, which is an HTML5 JavaScript app that uses the Excel app hybrid API. First, a few words about Excel app. Excel app allows you to package your HTML5 app as a native Android app, which gives you the ability to sell your app in the Play Store. But it also includes a comprehensive hybrid API that allows you to access native device functions from JavaScript, such as making a phone call, using GPS, intercepting and sending SMS silently, or even using Google's in-app purchasing directly from JavaScript. What's really important is that you don't need to learn anything new. You don't even need Eclipse or the Android ADT, etc. Just use your existing tools and your existing skills, and you can now build a native app. Excel app provides almost 50 native APIs for you that can be accessed directly from JavaScript. Please visit excelapp.com for all API details and detailed examples. The source for this demo app is available from excelapp.com. Now, let's look at some of the functions of the demo app. What you're seeing in front of you is how the app looks when you download it from the Play Store, so you can just fire up the demo app like I'm doing here. First, let's take a look at AdMob. AdMob is Google's mobile advertising network. By using Excel app, you can easily implement AdMob in your HTML5 app. Let's see how it looks. I'm going to activate AdMob and we should start to see ads appearing at the top. Let's take a second or two, maybe a little longer. There we go. Starting to see ads being served by AdMob in my HTML5 app. Just return now. But one of the advantages of integrating Excel app into your HTML5 app is the use of native APIs. Let's look at some dialogues. There are two advantages to using native dialogues. Number one, you get a native look and feel. Your app looks like a proper Android app. And you get the native performance, as we'll see. Number two, you don't need to write these common types of dialogues. Use what we provide. So let's take a look at some. Here's a date picker, native look and feel, native performance. And this dialogue here is actually our alert uh, dialogue, just putting up some info here. Take a look at the time picker. Again, native look and feel, native performance. Okay, let's take a look at um, progress dialogue. In this dialog, we'll go from 0 to 100, all driven from JavaScript. When it gets to 100, we'll close it programmatically. Closing now. There we go. Got another type of dialog, progress dialog, indeterminate. When we don't know how long things are going to take. That one went up for five seconds, and then I closed it. Okay. Very good. Now, let's take a look at um, something we call device info. It's sometimes useful to know uh, some physical characteristics about the device. And they, for example, the application version, the name, you know, device manufacturer, the height, the width. So it shows some device info. So using this API provides this, in, this information, the Android version, 4.4.2, uh, the phone, you can see it's a Samsung phone, so on and so forth. And also very important, you can see the screen height and the screen width, which you might use in determining how to lay out your app dynamically. Okay. Let's take a look at um, some location, such as GPS stuff. Okay, got a compass example here. Uh, right now, the this is uh, again all real time. Right now, the phone is pointed north northeast, forty degrees. If I change the phone here, if I just pick it up a bit, you can see how it's changing. There we are. And I'll just keep the phone here. So I want to show you something called the accelerometer. You can see these numbers. This is all from JavaScript. When I'm shaking a device, you can tell when it's being shaken like that. And that might be good if you want to reset a game or something. Just have the user shake it, pick up the how much it's, it's changed, and uh, take action. At current location via GPS. Just wait for that location change event. This is the kind of thing that gives you latitude, longitude, uh, your speed, such as we're seeing here. Um, and I've, I've used this to actually write a, a, a little speedometer app for myself. 
tells me because you can figure out the speed your meters per second and then from there in kilometers per hour etc your bearing your altitude latitude longitude which you can then use uh, for our maps api but i'm not going to go into that right now so useful stuff okay now let's take a look at some sounds and we provide an api that lets you uh you know play sounds in the background for example, uh, I'm going to start playing some music here. So I'm going to fire up our file, choose our API, which is what this is. So the user can navigate. And yeah, let's just play, say, Florida Georgia Line. You see, there's no audio player here. It's all being played in the background. Okay. Stop playing music. So you can play the user's uh, favorite song while they're in your app. Okay. Uh, combined with the sounds, we also have the notifications. So, for example, you can play the default alarm. There it is. Stop the notification. Um, the default notification. There you are. And that's good, for example, if you want to react to an event. You know, we do have an API that lets you intercept SMS messages, so perhaps you can beep the phone like that or play a specific uh, ringtone or sound. That's a default ringtone. Again, all from JavaScript, of course. We've got something very useful um, called this the screenshot API. In your app, you can take a screenshot of what's on the screen. It'll render 100% correctly. Uh, very good for documenting. If you consider, as you're moving through your app, you can take a screenshot of every screen. It saves you a lot of time. And it's also good for uh, problem reporting, that kind of thing. So let's take a screenshot, see what it says here. It says the next screen you see is actually a screenshot. What we've done is we've captured a PNG of the screen, downloaded it, and launched that file. So now it's asking how do we want to render this. We use gallery. And that is the actual screenshot that we captured. This is not the app anymore. This is a photo viewer. Let's just go back and you'll see the screen flicker and we'll be back in our app. There we go. We're now back in our app. You can see AdMob still running up at the top there. Okay. Sometimes you want to handle the back key. Maybe you're on a uh, sensitive screen. Uh, for example, uh, the user's entering some credentials and you don't want them to leave. We can intercept the back key in JavaScript. So let's uh, insert our back key handler. So now when I press the, the back key, I'm getting a message. So I'm not allowing the user to, to leave the screen. You can clear the back key handler. Now when I go back, it works. But an HTTP proxy, what this really is, is a replacement for XML HTTP. And that has the, uh, the XML HTTP has the same origin uh, restriction so you can only contact the site you were downloaded from or launched from we don't uh, have that restriction so you can contact any site let's just uh, get the Google stock price from Yahoo Finance sorry there we go got the got the price from Yahoo Finance Put it up on the screen. Very good. Now let's take a look at, um, we also give you the capability of, of creating your own options. For example, when I press the, uh, the options button here, all I get is the, the, the phone model. But we can add to the options menu. Options menu created. That's obviously coming from my code. Um, you don't that, that doesn't come up every time you uh, create the options menu that's just to say it's done for the demo now when I press options I get the options that I inserted and each one of these options can have an individual callback so when I press this one I can go to uh, callback one callback two etc etc so I press that callback clear the options in return because you may have different options based on different uh, different pages one of the most exciting features about Excel app is the ability to use Google's in-app billing. This allows you to sell subscriptions to your app, unlock 
portions of the app that perhaps only paid users can use uh, in a game, buy lives, that kind of thing. We make it simple for you to implement in-app billing. A few lines of JavaScript code gives you an awful lot of function. Okay, so let's just do a, a test purchase here. You can see that's uh, Google Play. Test purchase, 99 cents. Buy it. It's just for test testing. Payment successful. Returns to the app. And we give you APIs. You can query the Play Store to see if the user has uh, purchased a certain product of yours, etc. Okay. Now let's just go take a quick look at the phone API. The phone API is pretty interesting because we, we allow you to implement a listener. So you can inspect incoming calls, outgoing calls, determine whether the phone is off hook, whether it's ringing, what the number is. And we've got this uh, another API that allows you to hang up the phone. Uh, the reason we, we have that is you can inspect an incoming call and if you don't like the number, you can just call the hang up phone API and the phone won't even ring. Or you can do other things, of course, depending, but that's one of the things you would use it for. Make a phone call. I just want to draw your attention here to, this is our prompt uh, API, and you can see how we support edit masks. So right now, I've called the prompt API, and I've given it an edit mask of phone, so that the keyboard itself is, is the proper kind of keyboard for the input I'm asking the user to enter. So one, two, three, five, six, one, two, three, whatever. Just say done in here. Now uh, the phone will start to dial. It's not going to go anywhere, of course, with that. We'll just end that call and go back. Okay. Yeah, that's very good. Okay, so in summary, this is just a brief, uh, brief demo, of course, into the capabilities. But in summary, you can simply use Excel app to package your HTML5 app as is and create a native APK, or you can use our robust hybrid API to access the device natively. Key point, use your existing skills, existing tools, Eclipse and Android Studio, etc. There are not required. Okay? So thank you for your time. I hope this was helpful. Okay. Goodbye.